Protest songs. Political songs. Songs that shook us to our core for their thorough creative depictions of issues. The combination of words with melodies, the bass, drums, guitar, vocals, etc. To beautifully intertwine art with reality. One famed musician took this by storm in 1975 and that man was Bob Dylan. A bullet from the back of a bush took Medgar Evers' blood. His finger fired the trigger to his name. His presence was felt through his songwriting. Here he is performing at the March on Washington in 1963. Do you care about what you're saying? How can I answer that if you got the nerve to ask me? Well, then you, how can I, I mean, you got a lot of nerve asking me a question I, 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 like that. I have to. Do you ask the Beatles that? He would be lambasted by the media. Phil Oakes wrote something in a recent broadside magazine to the effect that you have that you have twisted so many people's wigs that he feels that it becomes increasingly dangerous for you to perform in public before an audience. Well, that's the way it goes, you know. He would say he felt many had a work view of him, which was true. However, his voice, his songwriting, mattered. Look no further than Reuben Hurricane Carter. I realize that I am here in prison. But I, I committed no crime to be here in prison. The crime was committed against me. Carter, seen here, was in prison as an innocent man. Ruben had a rough upbringing. He would write in an autobiography, the kindest thing that I can say about my childhood is that I survived it. He grew up with a speech impediment and was even sent to juvie. From the streets of Patterson, Carter would join the Army's 101st Airborne Division, which enabled him to travel in the South, though he bitterly describes it in a phrase beginning a America the dirty white racist and ending in an obscenity. He experienced segregation firsthand. In West Germany, he took up boxing and was hooked immediately. In 1961, he began his pro boxing career. Known as a powerful puncher, he was aggressive but tactical. He'd score 19 knockouts. At approximately 2.30 a.m., two men entered the uh, Lafayette Bar and Grill, began firing weapons, killing two men instantly and wounding a man and a woman. There would be faulty evidence that would place Carter and friend John Artis at the scene. Two ex-cons named Bradley and Bella who were in the process of robbing a factory near the bar at the time of the murders later told the police that they'd seen two black men fleeing from the scene. These confessed burglars later testified that one of the men they saw running from the bar that day was Reuben Carter and largely on the basis of their testimony Carter and a friend named John Artis were later convicted of three counts of murder. Both men were sentenced to life imprisonment. Dylan saw all this and would write the song The Hurricane. He and theater writer Jacques Levy set the scene perfectly in the opening stanza. It was an ear-grabbing beginner, a magnificent intro, painting the picture of gunfire. The first witness, Patricia Graham Valentine, aka Patty Valentine, who would later give conflicting testimony in numerous trials. She described the getaway car having triangular or butterfly-shaped taillights. She said it was a 66 Dodge Monaco. Carter's car, however, was a 66 Dodge Polara, which per the Times has triangular shaped aluminum decoration in the rear, but the whites are more conventional. She would give faulty testimony, which defense attorneys caught more than once. The chorus, a mainstay in the world of political songwriting, the bare truth of the matter, Carter was destined to be middleweight champion of the world. Instead, he's rotting in a cell because the police needed to point the finger at someone. The second verse is where Dylan hones in on one of two men, Alfred Bellow. He would also later recant his story that he saw Carter and Artis as the gunman in the triple murder at Lafayette Bar and Grill. He'd admittedly lied to police, Assemblyman Eldridge Hawkins, and the Essex County Grand Jury. Bellow was a former convict. The two men, before Judge Samuel A. Lamer in Superior Court, said they had been pressured by detectives into perjuring themselves. It was explosive. A new trial would take place. The story goes, the pair was promised reduced sentences and favors curried to them for their testimony. Last fall, both of the key prosecution witnesses the two ex-cons, Arthur Bradley and Alfred Bellow, recanted their testimony. They admitted to Selwyn Rabb of the New York Times and to other newsmen that Carter had been telling the truth about his innocence. This is one of them, Bellow, who claimed that the police pressured him into testifying against Hurricane Carter. They would admit 
to what Dylan put in the song, robbing a factory, running into the Lafayette Bar and Grill to rob the register, then bolting. The inspiration for Dylan was not just Carter's story, but his book, The 16th Round, from number one contender to number 45472. After visiting him in prison, he gave this quote on your screens. A version of the chorus depicts what officers did when one individual survived the shooting, though it was questionable at best to rely on the victim. William Marins would lose sight in his left eye via the gunshot wound. Carter and artists were taken to the hospital to be identified by Marins, who said they were not the shooters. Carter would be released. He would head to South America for a fight, which he lost. However, when he returned, he was promised a title bout against Dick Tiger for the championship. That was until police relied on Bello and Bradley. I was later questioned about it and questioned for weeks on end, and uh, I believe that was used by the prosecutor's office. I told them I had seen two black males. They were telling me, you've seen John Artis and Reuben Carter. When I, ad when I identified them in the grand jury, I identified them on a moment, and it was instantly regretted, which I could not do anything about. I had no power to do anything about it. The two crooks would change their stories multiple times, and that was until Bello finally acknowledged nearly a decade later that he lied. In fact, as Dylan shines a light on, the New York Times would later report in 1974 that Bello said a detective by the name of Vincent J. DeSimone Jr. was chiefly responsible for his perjury and that he was pressured into identifying Artis and Carter. Tapes of the officers would be uncovered in 1974, which per the Times were hidden in the original trial. On your screens are parts of those recordings. Three detectives will be called to the stand. Each one denied Bello was coerced. Take that for what it's worth. Bradley, meanwhile, would insist that he lied to get a reduced sentence for not one, not two, not three, but four armed robbery charges that were unrelated to this case. Dylan would lay out just how badly the cops wanted to pin the shooting on Carter, illustrating where the police are coming from. From the get-go, it was clear. The evidence does not line up to throw Carter and Artis in prison. It was a terrible, inhumane crime that took place, but the pair was innocent. From the taillights to the clothing, the descriptions, and the weapons, almost nothing match. Carter and Artis would be found guilty by an all-white jury. Their sentences were 30 years to life in prison. After Fred W. Hogan, a senior investigator for the New Jersey Office of the Public Defender's Monmouth County Bureau, got in touch with Bellow and Bradley, who would recant, Artis and Carter filed motions for a new trial. Judge Samuel A. Lamer would deny a new trial from being had. After the ruling, Dylan, along with countless musicians, performed at Clinton State Prison, where Carter was incarcerated. They would organize concerts to benefit the hurricane. Possibly the most depressing part, albeit there are many, takes place towards the tune's conclusion. How can the life of such a man be in the palm of some fool's hand? To see him obviously framed couldn't help but make me feel ashamed. To live in a land where justice is a game. Now all the criminals in their coats and their ties are free to drink martinis and watch the sunrise while Reuben sits like Buddha in a ten-foot cell, an innocent man living in a hell. Dylan would play at MSG and raise roughly a hundred thousand dollars for Carter. Muhammad Ali would even make an appearance and speak to the crowd. The tide was turning, though it happened very slowly. In November of 1985, U.S. District Judge H. Lee Sorokin granted the 48-year-old Carter a writ of habeas corpus, in effect overturning his conviction along with a wedge accomplice John Artis in the 1966 shooting, wrote the Miami Times. From the same source, Sorokin would rule, and I quote, Carter and Artis's convictions were based upon an appeal to racism rather than reason and concealment rather than disclosure. They would be in prison for nearly 20 years. From the National Registry of Exonerations, after his release, Carter moved to Canada, where he worked on behalf of the wrongfully convicted. In 2004, he founded Innocence International, a Canadian nonprofit organization that sought to free wrongfully imprisoned individuals. The Institute for Global Leadership at Tufts University later took over aspects of the organization's work. Throughout their years in prison and after their release, artists and Carter remained close friends. When Carter was diagnosed with prostate cancer, Artis moved to Canada to care for him. Artis was by Carter's side when Carter died in April 2014. Artis continued
continued to share their story with a documentary film called My Name is John Artis, released in February 2020. Artis would pass in 2021. He was 75 years of age. If there are any stories that you want to bring to our attention, whether it is the local level, collegiate level, professional level, national level that you think would be worthy of a story and us covering, there are so many hours in a day and only so much we see. Submit them to me. Get at me on Twitter, on Instagram, and TikTok. Send me a DM, send me a tweet, what have you. We appreciate it. Hope you have a great day.